Well, this is the best foreign smartphone Apple has to offer so far in 2018. The iPhone SE is one of the most powerful and most affordable devices from Apple when it comes to compact phones and one-hand use. And despite this thing selling for less than $200 and $0 on contract, is it worth it and how does it perform? Let's find out. Let's start with a very very quick unboxing. So inside the box is the phone itself, user manual, 5 inch wall adapter, lightning cable, a pair of wired headphones with a normal headphone jack because yes this is one of the few phones that still has a headphone jack. Besides that it's running on the Apple A9 chip which is the exact same processor on the iPhone 6s. So it's pretty safe to say this thing is almost as powerful as the iPhone 6s just in a smaller 5s body. For the most part, the hardwares are quite similar to the 6S which I will get back to in a bit but let's face towards the 4-inch display. Now depending on who you are, you might see the 4-inch display has a positive or a negative. It's a very compact phone which not only makes it easy to carry around but it also offers a lot of power and a great battery life. But on the other side of the story, you might prefer a bigger screen size for a better user experience. And especially how with the iPhone X, we're moving towards a bezel-less display to find a good sweet spot between bigger displays and something that's easy to carry around. For my personal taste, I wouldn't switch back to a 4-inch display as my daily driver, but I still use this phone as my secondary phone. And that's because of the ease of use and the portability. Now the display is 60% screen to body ratio, not as powerful or as sharp as the OLED panels on the iPhone X, but for the most part it's good enough to get the job done. Now speaking in terms of performance, the iPhone SE does not glitch out unlike the iPhone 5S which very recently dropped in performance with all the bugs and glitches. This guy is so far so good. Speaking in terms of speed, the iPhone X is definitely faster but this is more of a difference you notice on hands on comparisons. Using the phone solely by itself doing everyday things I don't really feel like I'm losing on performance so that's a good thing. Gaming is another category the phone does really good at, my only drawback would be the 4-inch display. But again if you're okay with that or once you get used to the 4 inch display you'll be fine. Now switching back to the outside, I did not spend a lot of time talking about the outside and the hardware since it is something you're probably well aware of. But for a general statement it's a pretty solid phone for the price it's being offered at. It does lack water resistance which honestly is a big deal in 2018 compared to other phones that at least have some kind of IP rating. Besides that we have a 12 megapixel camera on the back which is almost as good as the iPhone 6s or even the iPhone 7's camera. It's able to shoot at 4K and take some incredible pictures with great color accuracy and the perfect amount of sharpness and saturation just as expected from Apple. The front facing camera is on the disappointing side, it's a 1.2 megapixel camera, nothing compared to the competition and while I don't really have a lot to say about it, it is okay to get the job done. Turning to the bottom, beside the headphone jack and the microphone we have a single down firing speaker which gets fairly loud for its kind and throughout the volume level is able to maintain a solid user experience. And moving back to the internals, another thing the iPhone SE lags in is 3D touch. And while it's pretty understandable for me, they weren't able to fit the technology in this small device and honestly doesn't make a big difference for me but it is something worth pointing out. We also have a 2GB of RAM which is sufficient for daily usage and performs pretty well thanks to the optimized software. But for long term use, a bigger RAM would be ideal, especially if you're planning to buy a new device and keep it for a few years. Other than that, it's a great phone, battery for my unit served me pretty well and easily got me throughout the time I'm at school or work. But if you are a heavy user or want your phone to last until you hit the bed, you might need to carry a power bank or compromise on usage. So overall, is it worth it in 2018? Absolutely. Especially if you're getting it on $0 on contract or from a third party seller or even used one because it will fall under $200. But if you're buying it new from Apple, I would say it's a little on the pricey side. Besides that, it performs pretty well with iOS 11 and will be supported for another two generations of iOS. It's not up to the speeds of the iPhone X but does a fairly good job with a decent battery life for a device this small. But lack of water resistance and not so great front facing camera is definitely a little downfall. And considering the 60% screen to body ratio that is soon to disappear, I would rate the iPhone SE a 7 out of 10. Only because of the performance and the quality it delivers from Apple at this price point. And yeah guys that would be a wrap. Let me know what you think about the iPhone SE in a comment down below and subscribe for more content like this. And as always, thanks for watching.